Welcome to this tutorial on manually editing and creating scripts using the Warp Engine feature of the Tangent Mapper. If you're not already familiar with the Warp Engine, then please watch our other videos on it first. You'll find links to these in the information area below. You'll need to at least know the basics in order to understand this video. The Warp Engine's record function means you shouldn't need to edit or create scripts manually, but there are rare occasions when you'll need to do this. In the previous tutorial videos, We've already looked at one such instance, where we set the sensitivity of a control by adding a multiplier in the move line of a script. In this video, we're going to be looking at creating a script without using the record function, adding actions before and after a loop, the restore command, copying scripts, the pause command, adding key presses, and finally the mode command. Note, everything we do here applies to any tangent panel and to both Windows and Mac systems. We're going to be using Resolve as our application, but you can use the Warp Engine on any application. Have a copy of the Warp Engine Made Simple Guide to hand to refer to. You'll find this by going to the Help menu in the Tangent Mapper and downloading it from there. It's really very simple to edit your scripts manually, so let's dive straight in and show you how easy it is. In Resolve, we have the hue versus hue curve, where you select a point on the curve representing a color and then adjust the point by dragging in the two text boxes at the bottom of the window. We're going to create a script that will control the hue rotation with a knob on the panel. The first thing we need to do is to assign the knob to be a warp. This will open the warp script editor window. Click new to create a new script and give it a name. We're going to call it hue rotation. Before we do anything, we need to know the screen coordinates of the hue rotation control. If we move the warp script editor to the side, we can see the control mapping window. At the bottom of the window, we can see the X and Y coordinates of the current mouse position. We'll use these to make a note of the center of the hue rotation control. Click in the on change area of the warp script editor window. The first line we're going to add is a move to position the cursor over the center of the hue rotation control. The S means the actual screen coordinates. The coordinates are the ones we got from the control mapping window. The next line we need to add is a left mouse click down to start our drag. The LD means a left mouse down. Now we need to start a loop. Anything in the loop will be repeated whilst the control on the panel is being moved. Note the colon before the loop. Then we need to move the mouse horizontally to do the drag. The R means move the mouse relative to its current position. The X feeds the knob changes into the X coordinate of the mouse to move it horizontally, with Y always being zero. There's nothing else to do in the loop, so we mark the end of the loop with an exit. Note the colon before the exit. Anything after the exit is performed once the knob stops moving. In our case, we need to release the mouse click to stop the drag, so we do a click up. The LU means left mouse button up. Finally, we need to add an end to mark the end of the script. We can now click Save and Select and test what we've done. First, we need to click on the green selector to select its point on the curve. Now, if we move the knob, we can see it changing the hue rotation control and the green point correspondingly move on the curve. Of course, we could have just hit the record button to generate this script, but we are just demonstrating how to create a script manually. Next, we're going to look at editing the script to improve it. In the previous example, we had to click on the green selector using the mouse before moving the knob. It would be much better if the green selector was automatically clicked as soon as we started to move the knob. We can do this by editing our script to add a mouse click on the green selector before starting the loop. First, we need to get the screen coordinates of the green selector. Open the control mapping window by clicking on the knob. We can get the screen coordinates from the bottom of this window as we move the mouse over the green selector. Now click on the hue rotation warp script name to open the warp script editor window. At the start of our script, we add a move to move the mouse over the green selector. Then we add a left mouse click to click on the green selector. The LC means a left mouse button down followed by an up. That's all we need to do except save edits. 
Let's quickly test this. First we'll click on the blue selector and move its point with the mouse. This is just to make clear what happens when we move the knob. Now if we use the knob on the panel, you can see it moves the green point without having to click on the green selector first. The script does this automatically for us at the start of the knob move. We can add additional actions after the loop, and next we're going to do this to demonstrate the restore command. The warp engine moves the mouse and performs clicks for us. In doing so, the cursor will have moved from where it was at the start of the script. This might not be desirable, and you prefer the mouse to return to where it originally was. We can do this with the restore command. So let's add this action at the end of the loop. Don't forget to click Save Edits before we test it. As you can see, this hasn't worked. The cursor is still over the hue rotation control. Sometimes we need to insert a pause into a script in order to give the application time to complete a previous action. With Resolve, this is one of those occasions. So let's add a pause before our Restore command. The value after the pause is the length we want to pause for in milliseconds. Here we're using 300 milliseconds, but you can use any value that suits your application. Now when we test it, we can see the cursor is restored as expected. Now we've got the script for the green selector, let's quickly copy it to a knob to control the blue point. First we open the hue rotation script in the warp script editor by clicking on its knob and then the script name. We copy the script as you would in any text editor. Now we need to click on another knob and assign it to be a warp. Create a new script and this time we'll call it blue hue rotation. We paste in the script we have just copied into the on change area. Next we need to get the screen coordinates of the blue selector using the control mapping window. We replace the green selector coordinates with the ones for the blue selector. Click save and select to assign it to this knob. We now have independent controls for both the green and blue hue rotation controls and the scripts automatically click on the appropriate selector for us. We can easily add a key press to a script. An example of why we might want to do this is doing a shift click with the mouse. So let's look at doing this. First we move the mouse to the screen corner to the control we want to click. The next line is a key down of the shift key. D is for down and note that shift is in quotes. Next we have the mouse click. And finally we finish on the key up of the shift key. This time we use U for up. Note the key can be any key on the keyboard. If you're going to create and use modes in the tangent mapper, you should note you can change modes from within a warp script. We're not going to go into any detail of what modes are and how to use them. For that you can read the mapper made simple or watch your introduction to the tangent mapper video. We'll simply state that modes allow you to break up the controls in an application into groups associated with a process or mode of working. The command to do this is mode followed by the name of the mode in quotes. That ends this tutorial. Again, we'd like to emphasize that most things can be done with the recording function of the Warp Engine. It's rare that you'll need to manually create or edit a script. Check out the links in the information area below for further videos and guides.